Physically inhibited by your appearance today, you are also formally dressed. Initially, I felt when I entered the room that I had made a mistake and unwittingly invited myself to a convention of undertakers. <laughs> For which I'm entirely unqualified, except for the fact that I once served as chair of the Senate Committee on Energy. Wag mo nang ganon kabigat. Ito na lang. Bakit sikat na sikat ngayon ang wind power? Maliban sa wind power ng mga senador pag nagsalita sila sa Senate. Sige, sige. Bakit sikat na sikat ngayon ang wind power? Kasi marami siyang fans. Eh bakit naman sikat ang geothermal power? Kasi hot siya. May naligaw sa akin dati. Tinanong ko siya, alam mo kung anong pinakaiba natin sa kuryente? Ang kuryente may sparks, tayo wala. <laughs> kuryente ka ba? Nasa shock kasi ako pag makikita kita. <laughs> Anong klaseng renewable power source ang kulang sa gobyerno? Nung una kala ko, will power lang. Pero ngayon mukhang pati brain power na. <laughs> Today, marks almost the exact time of the enactment of the 2008 Renewable Energy Act. Six years after its enactment, perhaps we can take time to assess what has been done and what needs to be done urgently. Renewable energy is defined as any energy source generated from natural resources which are naturally regenerative or replenished, such as solar, wind, ocean, geothermal, hydro and biomass. As chair of the Energy Committee, I had the good fortune to sponsor the Renewable Energy Act in the Senate. Together with the supporters of the bill, we were animated by the need to protect our energy security by reducing our heavy dependence on the fossil fuels and by reducing electricity rates. The potentials of the Philippines for renewable energy are huge in terms of available resources we can project that the Philippines could be one of the world's leaders in renewable energy. But this will depend on whether, starting next year, 2015, we can implement wholeheartedly the politics of the Renewable Energy Act. As the situation stands, our renewable energy sources, such as solar, wind, biomass, ocean, small hydro, and geothermal, are no less than abundant. We have abundant resources. So don't let anyone give you mis disinformation by saying that this is a poor country. This is a rich country in terms of natural resources. Of course, we know where our wealth goes. It goes to some people who are now behind bars. <laughs> Therefore, we have reason to pursue the ambition that a few years from now, the Philippines should be the world leader in geothermal energy the largest producer of wind power and the solar manufacturing hub in Southeast Asia. At present, the composition of our renewable energy resources is as follows. Number one, geothermal energy. Number two, biomass. Number three, hydro. Number four, both solar and wind. Since the Philippines is an archipelago, it will come as a big surprise to you that our present, at present our country is not generating energy from the whole ocean. Our government has taken very limited activities in the ocean sector because of the high cost of development. However, the Department of Energy expects the Philippines' first ocean energy facilities to start operations by 2018. Renewable energy constitutes a significant share of electric, electricity generation in our country. Problems in Renewable Energy The Renewable Energy Act is not working as it should be. Action is too slow and our renewable energy supply is too small after the six years that the law has been in operation. In implementing the law, we are falling behind in certain renewable energy options. According to the paper, Energy for Development, at least by next year, 
these actions should be launched for large-scale introduction in any area of our developing country. One, biogas for decentralized cooking and electricity. Two, small hydropower for local electricity. Three, small wind power for water pumping and local electricity. Four, solar photovoltaics for local electricity. Five, solar collectors for water and space heating. Six, ethanol and biodiesel for agriculture and transportation. Seven, large hydropower for grid electricity. Eight, la large wind power for grid electricity. Nine, geothermal energy for heat and grid electricity. If we could only hasten the development of these renewable energy projects, we can use renewable energy to contribute to poverty alleviation. We could provide the energy needed to create businesses and jobs. In this way, we can turn locally available resources into productive economic assets. If we look back this year, we realize that we have failed to meet the deadline of 2014 for the UN Millennium Project. We should now devote ourselves to solving the following problem, identified by a UN Millennium Project workshop as follows. Enabling the use of modern fuels for 50% of those who currently use traditional biomass for cooking. Supporting efforts to develop and adapt improved cook stoves meant to reduce indoor air pollution and measures to increase sustainable biomass production. Enabling access to reliable modern energy services for all urban and very urban poor. Providing electricity for such services as lighting, refrigeration, ICT, water pumping, and or purification for all schools, clinics, hospitals, and community centers. Enabling access to mechanical power for all communities. Providing all weather vehicle accessible roads and access to motorized transport for all communities. One expert who works in the field of energy has identified the problems of the energy sector as follows. One, the feed-in tariff approved by the ERC is substantially lower than what is proposed by the National Renewable Energy Board, especially for wind and solar, which by the nature of its technology is costly to build. Delayed implementation of net metering standards. Delayed implementation of renewable energy markets. Insufficient transmission system to interconnect and accommodate renewable energy power plants. A need to study the impact of the renewable energy production on the reliability and stability of the transmission system. I have pointed out the problems, but to be fair, allow me to mention not only the lapses in our renewable energy program, but also the challenges in the renewable energy sector as certified too by the Philippine Development Plan for 2011 to 2016, these challenges are as follows. High cost of renewable energy development due to a limited number of local manufacturers, fabricators, and suppliers of renewable energy equipment and components which are mainly important. Limited options to optimize the development of resources because of a lack of an up-to-date database on renewable energy resources lack of capacity building and training opportunities to enhance technical capabilities of stakeholders and potential developers, need for stronger research and development on renewable energy, limited infrastructure support, that is, transmission lines and submarine cables, and limited information and education campaign activities on renewable energy that includes advocacy on its benefits. Solutions. We have the means to harness energy for development and use renewable energy in meeting the Millennium Development Goals. In the paper of this same title, the following solutions are offered in order to increase the use of renewable energy. One, create a supportive policy and institutional frameworks. Two, promote private sector involvement. Three, level the playing field. Four, nurture microenterprise. Five, build projects around local needs and capacities. In conclusion, it is obvious that there is a need to fast track the implementation of renewable energy policy mechanisms. We need 
to remove and clarify opposition to the policy mechanisms from concerned stakeholders. May pinapahagang nga na dito. Other delays in policy actions have put various potential renewable energy projects at a standstill. To achieve positive changes, the key is to institutionalize social mobilization. We have to create a broad network of stakeholders working for a common goal. In the Senate, I have filed at least three bills on a solar initiative commission, a bill to support research and development for the use of diverse sources of energy, and a bill to make use of renewable energy in the agricultural sector. For every problem, there is a solution. Let us keep our resolve to achieve the agenda for renewable energy by this coming year 2015. As the poet wrote, God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds, with never failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, the Honorable Miriam Defensor Santiago. At this